very hot. Hi, I'm Mike Gibson and this is Expat in Russia. I've lived in Russia for 27 years and I totally love this place. So I thought it's time to share some Russian stories with you. This is a big country with a big heart and big stories to tell. Today our programme is about Russian tea drinking, which all starts with a tea service. So we came to this famous Russian porcelain factory to see how tea services are created. The porcelain factory in the village of Verbilki near Moscow was founded in 1766, that is 256 years ago. It was founded by the Englishman Franz Gardner. This was the first privately owned porcelain factory in Russia and one of the first porcelain factories in all Europe. Gardner supplied the finest porcelain to the court of Empress Catherine the Great. Since 2007, the Gardner factory in Verbilki has been an honorary member of the Kremlin Suppliers Guild. Tea and coffee sets, table settings, teapots, sculptures, and even interior items. All these are made here according to ancient technologies. The creation of this classic Russian teacup involves several stages. So let's go and take a look. It all starts here, in the master's studio, where new ideas are born. Valentin Nikonov is a porcelain artist, as were his ancestors. Generations of his family have been working with porcelain here at the Gardner factory since its foundation. Вот любое изделие начинается с эскиза из чертежа. На этом этапе нужно учитывать уже все. И сколько будет стоить изделие, и как, какими тиражами оно пойдет, и даже и как оно будет декорировано. Фарфор все-таки, он, на мой взгляд, это 90% технологии и 10% творчества. After the drawing, a plaster model and trial copies are then made. У Гарнера была подобная продукция, выдуманная вот в такой же примерной технике. Только uh, это бисквитное изделие, не глазурованное. Не глазурованный фарфор называется бисквит. Uh -huh. Только фон зеленый, хром, uh -huh. за счет хрома. И это вот такая отличительная черта именно гарнерского After making and testing trial samples, the porcelain products are then put into mass production. Here they pour liquid porcelain slip into special forms to create all the many different cups and saucers, plates and teapots, as well as these other objects. Внутрь формы заливается шликер. Mm -hmm. а гипс материал достаточно пористый, и влага, вода из шликера впитывается быстро в стенки oh, формы. Yeah. И сам фарфор как бы прилипает на время. Mm -hmm. И э, изделию внутри формы дают немножко подсохнуть. So here is the first firing, and all the pots are moving really slowly into the fire. I can see it, and it's about 600 to 900 degrees centigrade. Wow. <laughs> here we are, almost at the finish, where the porcelain is decorated and painted, and then it's sent off to be fired in the kiln. Here they paint the porcelain by hand and apply special decals. Вот это желтый фон – это лак, mm -hmm. и при наклеивании на изделие этот лак выгорает в печи, uh -huh. а краски намертво прикрепляются к глазури. So I'm now going to decorate a teapot myself with a decal. Look at this. So you just put it on, it's wet, and then you take the little cloth to make it smooth. Oh, did I do a good job? I'm not quite as good as a professional, but not bad. <laughs> Wow, it's, it's quite difficult to get it flat. Oh, it's very satisfying. I could sit here and do this for days. Вот здесь разделка золотом происходит. Очень кропотливая работа. Это еще не готовое изделие. А вот оно после того, как специалист вот нанес золото и изделие прошло обжиг. Да. So this service takes one week to do. We've seen another service that takes uh, can be done two in a day. So you can understand why this costs a lot more. So after all the stages of production, here is our teacup, full of tea and ready to drink at a table covered with delicious yummy Russian tea food. We came to the super cozy cafe Ex Libris, which is also a delightful tea service museum right in the heart of Moscow. 
We're here for a Russian tea party and excursion. So we've got a lot of very typical things for Russian tea time. Uh, we have, of course, the samovar, which is iconic. We have uh, the Nyodovik, which is a honey cake and they are delicious and again a very kind of typical Russian tea cake. Where would we be in Russia without blini and smetana and of course Russian pies. Then we have uh, varenia or jam which we don't put on bread like we do back in England. We actually just eat it directly on a spoon mm. and it's so good. No Russian tea would be complete without awesome sushki and yummy Russian chocolates. Mishka Vilisu actually has a very famous uh, painting on the uh, wrapping. It's a Shishkin, Shishkin? painting, uh, Bears in the Forest. And it's just an all-time classic and they're really yummy. And it's sort of like a wafer. I mean, kind of think like a Kit Kat, um, but with bears in the forest. It's like a beautiful thing. These are great. It's actually halva with chocolate on the outside. It's another very famous old uh, Russian sweet. Вот из моего детства я помню, как собирались бабушки, топили самовар, да, mm -hmm. топить самовар, и просто стаканами пили по 15 чашек. Mm -hmm. То есть есть такая теплая ассоциация, да, с бабушкой да, дома. Да, 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 да. Так, я думаю, что классическое представление о русском чаепитии, основанном на картинах Кустодиева, это знаменитый ah. русский художник, где сидит барыня, mm -hmm. у нее на кончиках пальцев стоит блюдце, из которого она подтягивает чай, рядом котик сидит, за спиной храм, в общем, все как полагается. During tea with Elena, we learn many interesting things about tea and tea services. In the cafe's unique folk museum, we saw such touching porcelain from the Soviet period, which is a real insight into Soviet times and is beautifully designed. The Soviet museum is dedicated to the transition from the Stalin's style of triumph and Stalin's style of victory to modernism in the 60s. And we examine this transition on the example of farfor, because farfor is actually in every family, in the Soviet family, in the Russian family. И это очень понятно, потому что это наглядно, и можно прийти домой и как бы увидеть историю страны на примере чашки, которая лежит у тебя дома. The porcelain of the 60s can be connected with the big projects of the Soviet Union. For example, the conquest of space, development of the North, or friendship with the East. Как вы думаете, что это? Интересно. Я просто думаю, почему есть маленький чайник наверху. Это подсказка, потому что это чайница. В ней хранится сухая заварка. Эта чайница посвящена теме севера. В 60-е годы происходит разработка и поиск нефтегазовых месторождений. Нужно было каким-то образом затащить людей на север. И советская пропаганда работает очень просто. Выпускают несколько сервизов северных. That looks so good. Mmm. Yeah, this Russian cabbage pie. I just love the idea of putting cabbage in a pie. And it's such a kind of classic Russian pie. You should try them wherever you go in Russia. Particularly if anyone's babushka offers you cabbage pie, just say yes and try it, because they're always yummy. So I hope today you got a feeling of just how special Russian Chaipitia is with the beautiful tea services and the yummy food. Please subscribe to us and come back and watch us again. And come and join me for some tea. And stand up coming up. Dajte šoras. Ti nie bo se tu mo protekt. Aluski. That's for you. It's idealna.